Hi everybody, this will be part 28 of the character rigging tutorial series. This video will discuss how to create controls for helper joints and twist joints. Last video we talked about how to do facial joints and videos before that we talked about how to set up basal, basic facial or basic joints and controls for the arms, legs, and torso. One thing we didn't do was talk about how to create controls for uh, these helper joints uh, that will allow us to kind of move the joint around. Uh, and it, we didn't talk about how to do twist joints, so rotate twist joints as well. All right, so our helper joints will be movement based joints, and our twist joints will be rotate based joints. Okay. All right, so this video will explore how to do uh, the helper and twist joints for the arms and the legs. All right, so we're gonna use another curved circle. So we'll bring another circle out. We'll rotate it 90 degrees, scale it up a little bit. And then we're gonna place this in front of the front leg helper controls here. Uh, so I'm gonna hold down the V key and snap this uh, over. Turn off our geometry for a second. There we go. Snap this up. I don't know which one's which here. Yeah, that'll work. I guess they're both in front and back here. All right, so we want to make this small, and I'm actually going to be putting this pretty close to the um, the body as well. But I do want it outside the body so I can allow this to give me options for selecting it without going inside. Yeah, so something like that, maybe a little further, so that when the leg bends and moves, I can hopefully still be able to see this. All right. I'm going to duplicate that and we'll move it over to the other side and then we'll take both of those and duplicate them to the back side. So we have four controls, two for the front of the leg, two for the back of the leg. So let's, uh, from the front view, turn off our geometry, hold on the V key and snap that over. We'll do the same thing for the back control as well. There we go. All right, so these will be a movement based control. We don't really need to worry about rotate but a movement based control so what we're going to do is let's take these four controls let's go ahead and rename them so control left uh, front leg helper okay a long name but try to make sense of it uh, control left or right front leg helper okay mouthful Control left back leg helper. Control left right sink. Am I backwards? Yep, I am backwards. Right back leg helper. Control, whoop, oh, I messed that one up. Left back leg helper. This one will be right back leg. There you go. All right, um, okay, so now we need to select those four. Uh, we'll go to edit, um, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations. All right. We're ready to do the constraint. So we're gonna do a different constraint here, and this is gonna be called a point constraint. So I'm gonna select the left front control for the helper, shift select the joint for that helper. We're gonna do a point constraint. Point constraints only uh, let's go in the box beside it and change, turn on maintain offset, click add. So point constraint only constrains the translates. Okay, orient constraint only constrains the rotates, point constraint only constrains the translates. So what that will do is that will give me the opportunity to come in here and kind of move this joint in and out with this control and correct any weird deformations that that area might have. Let's go back and do the same thing for the other one. So let's go to the back curve, select the back joint. Constrain point. Okay, here's the front curve to front joint constrain point. Back curve to back joint constrain point. Okay, so those will all work uh, for adjusting the way that uh, helper joint works. Now there is going to be an issue though. When I pick up my leg control, whoa! Now what's happening here? Uh, I've got some weird stuff going on. So we're going to try to correct this uh, with some secondary constraints. 
So I really, really only need this control to move. I don't need it to rotate. All right, so what we're actually going to have to set up is like a dummy group. Uh, in a similar way that the offset controller set up a dummy group, but we're going to have to create a manual dummy group this time. So basically, we can't do a parent constraint here on the uh, actual helper joint controls because we want to be able to translate these controls to correct the motion. So what we need to do is create a dummy group. And we'll still get this individual motion of the control, but the dummy group will have a parent constraint to the hip joint. So that way when the hip joint rotates or moves, this control will then move with it, but still have the same individual control to move this helper joint. So we're gonna take each one of these controls and hit Control G, that creates a group. And we're gonna go, let's say, GRP, uh, control, left, front, leg helper. Okay, mouthful again. What I need to do is make sure I go modify center pivot. That puts the pivot point back to the center of the object or that curve. Let's go back to the same thing. So this is the left, uh, right front one, control G for group. GRP control right front leg helper. Modify center pivot. There we go. So that one's over there. Uh, back leg control G. Group, GRP for group, control. I think this is, I don't know, let's just try it out. Control left front or back leg helper. Which one is this? Modify center pivot. Well, oh, that's the right. So we just need to go change the name. Um, instead of left, we'll change it to right. There we go. Uh, should look at my name in here. Uh, so in the last one, we're going to take uh, this back left one, control G to group, GRP underscore control left back leg helper. Correct my name up here. Helper. Helper. There you go. All right. Uh, we need to send the pivot for this last one. Modify center pivot. There you go. Make sure the pivot's there. Make sure the pivot's there. Make sure the pivot's there. All right. We do not have to freeze the transforms to delete the history for this group. The controls already had that on there. All right, so now those groups are created, uh, we need to do a parent constraint for the group. This is gonna be the opposite of the way we've done the constraints with the curves before, because what I want this control to do is still give me the option to animate and move this control, but uh, when this control, uh, when the hip joint rotates, I want this control to also move and rotate. So what I'm gonna do is select the hip joint and then in the outliner, I'm gonna control click on the group. And this is time if I do constrain parent, that is gonna allow this joint to work properly. So if I select the left foot control again and move that, uh, the left front control for the helper is moving properly. You go to the back one is not, the front one is. So let's do the same thing for the back one. Let's select the joint for the hip, hold down the control key, and select the left, left back helper group, constrained parent. Okay. So now my left leg should be working properly. You see those controls are rotating and moving with the leg when the leg moves. But then I can also come in here to the control and move and animate the helper control. Let's do the same thing for the other side. So to finalize the control setup for the helper for the leg, select the joint and then come down control, click on the helper group, constrained parent. Do something for the other one. Uh, select the joint, hold down the control key, uh, select the group for the back right leg helper control. Constrained parent. There we go. So whenever we're doing one side of the body to the other, we want to make sure that both sides are working uh, symmetrically and do work properly. There is no mirroring over joints and controls uh, in this standpoint in a clean, efficient way. So we, you will have to go back to the other side of the body and manually recreate them also. So those helper joints for the 
uh, uh, leg work properly. Let's do the same thing for the shoulders. All right. Uh, so let's create another circle. Whoops. Turn our outliner back on. Let's create another circle. We'll pull this one up here. We'll scale it out. So it doesn't need to be that large. Uh, but what I am going to do is turn off my geometry and snap this to that helper joint that's on top of the shoulder. Uh, but just move it up some. So we're going to do that. Rotate that down. All right. Let's uh, duplicate and copy over to the other side. Actually, turn my geometry back off. Snap that so that's on top of that one. Works. All right, so that's gonna be above my shoulder. Let's uh, select the two, edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze, transformations, and let's go name these. So control, left, shoulder, helper. Control, right, shoulder, helper. Didn't have a space with my other group, so I won't do that here as well. All right. All right, so we're gonna do the same point constraint here. So control left shoulder helper. We're gonna shift select that helper joint. Constrain point. That's gonna only constrain the translate. So if I move that, that should move that joint. Go to the other arm. Uh, control shift select the helper joint. Constrain point. Now we wanna make sure that the control moves with the uh, joint uh, as far as the shoulder joint so that it doesn't uh, awkwardly move the body there. All right, so we're gonna create a group of the control. Control, I'm gonna say group, control, left, shoulder, helper. Modify, center pivot, okay. Select my other helper control, control G for group. Group, control, right, shoulder, helper. All right, so what we need to do is when the uh, joint, the sh shoulder joint rotates, we want to move and rotate this group. So I'm gonna select the shoulder joint, come down here and hold down control and click on the left shoulder group. Constrain, parent. So now if I move my shoulder control, that helper joint should move with it. There you go. But I should still be able to move my shoulder uh, helper. And do all that. Let's do the same thing on this side. So I'll select the shoulder joint on the right side, hold down the control key and select the group for the shoulder helper. Constrain parent. Okay, let's test that out. Select the shoulder control. That works. Take the Helper control, rotate that and move that around. All right, that should work here. All right, so that's how we can set up helper controls for the helper joints to help correct the blending deformations of certain areas of the body that might have issues. All right, we'll wrap this video up here. In the next video, we'll talk about adding twist controls.